Link TV, connecting you to the world. Link TV is viewer supported. Watch more at linktv.org. Today on Earth Focus, oceans cover 72% of the Earth's surface and support life, but today they're threatened. A new book, The Atlas of Coast and Oceans, tells why. Author and environmental journalist Don Heinrichsen joins coastal expert Stephen Olson in explaining what we can do about it. Coming up on Earth Focus. I've done two previous books on the world's oceans and coasts, and I had wanted for some time to, to take all of the data that I had accumulated previous in previous work, update it, and, and get it into the form of a map, maps, and sidebars that were more easily accessible and understandable by a broader audience. And there seemed to be a need for this because I hadn't seen anything quite like this before. You could see atlases of, of oceans, but it's all, you know, oceanography. It's not the human impact on oceans and coasts that, that I had wanted to bring uh, into focus. There's over-exploitation of almost every ocean marine research you can think of. I mean, the, the big three that I like to, to point out, which is mangrove, seagrasses, and coral reefs, and they're usually found in that order from the shoreline outwards. Uh, they're all interlinked. They're all being overexploited. I mean, mangroves have been reduced from uh, by 20 to 30 percent just since the 1980s, and this is global coverage. Seagrass beds, we're losing an area of seagrass the size of a football field every 30 minutes. Uh, the latest reports I've seen on coral reefs uh, indicate that if we continue this destructive patterns, I mean, they're being mined for limestone, they're being overfished, uh, they're being destroyed by bottom trawls, which are essentially like bulldozing their way along the bottom, sucking up all kinds of life forms in addition to those fish that they're, that they're targeting. They kill everything. I've seen pictures of the bottoms that have been, that have been subject to bottom trawls, and it really is a, as if a bulldozer had just gone through the whole region and flattened everything. And this is happening on a regular basis throughout the world seas, uh, not just off the coasts of developed countries, but all over. And so this contributes to the demise of coastal, e coastal and marine ecosystems as well, and just destroying in fact, a lot of the environments in which fish thrive, the kinds of fish that we like to eat. So that, that's another problem that's, that's coming to the fore that's increased in intensity over the last 20 to 30 years is there are more fishing boats going out, catching fewer and fewer fish. Um, you've got people saying that if we continue along the lines we are at the moment, there, this will be the last century of wild fish. They'll be gone by the middle of this century. One way to look at it is that coasts are the primary habitat of us. Uh, about half, soon to be more, of all people are compressed into the little ribbon of land along the edges of seas and oceans. Something like 5% of the inhabited land space. So it's very much about people. The difficulty is that the change needs to be very large and we've got to move pretty quickly. And I think the coastlines are the, the place where we're either going to learn to live within our means on this planet or not. What is it that's causing the dead zones? Well, mainly it's human, it's, it's human impacts, but particularly from agricultural activities in these vast watersheds that, that empty into the oceans and coasts. 
nutrients, uh, in particular nitrogen and phosphorus for fertilizers and also pesticide residues go in, and a number of other things, including animal waste are pulled out, sent to the rivers, which then flow into the Mississippi, which then dumps all of this in the Gulf of Mexico. And what you get after time is when, when all of this sort of ferments and breaks down and, and drops to the bottom, you, you get uh, an oxygen-starved zone because the microbes and the microorganisms that are chewing this stuff up take up oxygen in order to do that. And it, it creates essentially an ocean desert where no life forms higher than microbes can survive. And there are now 400, more than 400 of these dead zones throughout the world, mostly in the coastlines of developed countries. We need to start thinking large scale. It's not enough anymore to do these pilot projects, which then kind of die out once the money dries up. You have to learn from them and you have to scale them up so that you can actually have an impact. And this is the big challenge, but I think it's possible. But governments need to take these challenges more seriously. And they need to have the capacity to bring in all of the players you need to have around a table so that you can actually have a plan that can be implementable and work in the end. A huge problem that we face is that the governance system for the planet which is now where more and more of these changes are occurring at that scale, is very weak. These systems have to be managed in an integral fashion, not piecemeal. And you can't just have a fisheries management plan in place if you're not managing the ecosystems on which they depend. So there's, there's, they're taking a more holistic approach. And this, I think, is very crucial and very important if, you want, if you're really serious about tackling these issues. One of the things that we should be learning is that we tend to focus our efforts in what's called management on the end result. We measure the water quality or the reef or the numbers of fish endlessly. What we need to focus on is what are the people doing? How are they reacting to knowledge or to changing circumstances? But it's not just about science. This is our primary habitat, and if we don't manage ourselves and our activities in a way that maintains the qualities of the place that are so wonderful for us, then we will pay a very stiff price. Link TV is the only U.S. network dedicated to global and national news, uncompromising documentaries, and diverse cultural programs. Programs which connect you to the world. To learn more, visit linktv.org.